we've been delving into propaganda for half a year now. We've seen it ebb and flow from janky beginnings with Bolshevism on trial and reefer madness to glorious heights with um, why we fight and uh, don't be a sucker. But then we've kind of seen this like steady decline first as it became domesticated, then as it became kind of prostituted to the Reaganite agenda, and then it be- as it became democratized in the early 21st century to the point that now they're not even making arguments. It's just repeatable nonsense that can be thrown to chum the waters for one's base. What does that mean for propaganda as an art form? Sure as hell, a lot got more depressing. We think of propaganda now as being ever present and controlling our ideas, and instead, it's just about something that people can throw out to distract their political enemies. In a way, propaganda has become less effective, which is kind of the opposite thesis from where we started. It's about like exhausting the opponent more than winning them over. You're exhausting them from wanting to fight back rather than convincing them to join you. After all, all it takes for evil to win is for the good guys to do nothing. Exhaustion is just a numbers game. That's all it is. And Propaganda has become a war of attrition. You remember those half-assed attempts at a left-wing version of PragerU? Or yeah. Corvell Institute. Very clear left-wing propaganda, and it just failed. So there's also an- another weird thing with this 21st century change. It was the left that pioneered this new framework for propaganda. Isn't that kind of the old trope, though? The left or the progressives or whatever, they're they're moving forward and doing new things to spread the message, and then the conservatives conservatives are like, no, we don't want to participate in this new drivel. We want the the more traditional ways. And then when they start losing, they go, fuck, we have to actually move forward. That's why they took over radio and then they took over TV decades after more liberal to left-wing activists would use those things. And that the internet is just the next thing. Yeah. Because the people who want to be- Conservatives are always- playing catch up, which makes sense. I mean, that's kind of inherent to conservatism. Their ability to propagate has significantly changed. Like with the Birchers, 1966, when they put out Anarchy USA, that was laughably dumb. And mind you, what we just watched with Tucker, laughably dumb still too. But somehow it resonates compared to what the Birchers were doing after 1964. I really don't know what else to say the standards have lowered after 15 episodes how can you sum up a change that happened over 40 years but we watched the change happen throughout this entire series we have chosen things to watch that are representative samples of their times and by doing so anytime you hear people saying like oh you don't know what it was like back then we've chosen to put ourselves in that time frame Back in the day, you had limited avenues to be successful and to be viewed as seriously. So Democratization even if, of media. If you wanted to like get a message out there, the only way we can get it out there is if we play by the rules as much as the minimum that we have to, to just get the message out there. So we're going to be more formal. We're going to have a documentary because that was the standards. The bars were higher and that's the only way you can get out. Now that you don't have to uphold those standards to, get wa- to be watched and to be taken seriously, now that those bars have lowered, the bar of effort has lowered. They're only going to do the minimum of what they have to do to get the job done. And so as the standards of acceptability have lowered and the costs of production have lowered, you have the increase of low effort content getting more bang for their buck. What you're describing is the removal of regulation, policy, any kind of of controls. We have a word for that. Austerity. Well, austerity is a component of it, but austerity is referring to fiscal policy, not regulation. The word is neoliberalism. Late stage ca- oh. And I have to wonder how much propaganda has to do with our ever-changing climate of culture war nonsense versus the other way around. How much of it is driven by propaganda? Well, it feeds upon itself. It's I kind think, of a chicken and egg problem, but... Well, I, I, think it, I think it originally started from top down. I think of something as simple as the drug wars. All you need to do is have the government say, you know, we decided that these drugs are bad. We're going to have D.A.R.E. and all these other programs to say drugs is bad. And then it doesn't take long to have your moms against drugs groups. And then it doesn't have long for your local communities to be doing things. And then now you've got... Once it gets down to that level, it's 
starts feeding upon itself, you know. Mm. So I, I'm, I'm sure originally this start this all started off with top down culture war stuff, but then the crazies on the ground got more passionate than the government wanted, and now Pandora's box is opened. I know there's the idea of the slippery slope fallacy, but I feel like this is like a different sort of thing where it's not necessarily a slippery slope. There is something to be said about unleashing dangerous powers that are hard to control. How much is propaganda organized around niche? And is that what's driving this removal from trying to make any kind of argumentation? Most people have transitioned from the expectation of you will dedicate yourself to the one thing and be known for the one thing, maybe two, and that's your life, to the more of the expectation of being a more well-rounded individual. Now it's more about having different arsenals on your tool belt than having a tool. You went from a niche tool set that allowed you to pick apart somebody else's argument to just bombarding your enemy with as many bullets as possible. Tactical exhaustion, yep. Attrition. I feel weird being sad about the state of propaganda. After half a year of studying propaganda, this is where we are. This isn't nostalgia. It's more, oh God, why did it have to get worse? We had like legitimately great propaganda in the 1940s. It's not that you're fond of the problems. It's that you're more fond of the problems being easier to deal with. It wasn't just bombarding people with arguments. It was about changing people's minds. You know, I remember when criminals had a code. They had honor, respect. What do you believe in, huh? What do you believe <laughs> Over time, we've gone from the multi-tool to bombardment. While that does seem to be an effect of technology, it's also an effect of changing culture as propaganda reacts to the changing technology, of course, but also the way that culture has become more and more polarized. In the 1980s and 90s, while propaganda was easy to spot, it was fun, it was fine, it was sufficient from there on out, it became more and more diluted by just a constant barrage of nonsense. We used to stand in line and shoot at each other, but now we hide in the trenches like cowards and fire artillery shells. That is way too apt of a metaphor. <laughs> That's why I used it. War used to be a more gentlemanly. But am I being unrealistic with this? We long for the problems to be simpler and easier to deal with. At the very least, when propaganda used to be, I say this, well, here's why you're wrong, and then that's it. You have to try harder, and there's too much of it now. What's weird about the quantity over quality approach, that while it might cost a lot more, it's effective. Well, yeah, that's why we stuck with the whole artillery firing and we never went back to standing straight in the line because it works. Like you're countering something at its level, typically for it to be effective. So if the propaganda is trying to make a genuine argument, it could be countered by another legitimate argument back, right? But then there's the Mark Twain quote of never argue with a fool. He'll bring you down to his level and beat you with experience. Admittedly, conservatives have managed to capture propaganda as an art form for the last decade. If it's quantity over quality, why haven't liberals or leftists managed to use propaganda in their favor since Michael Moore? Well, I think we have the Al Gore version, which is, again, making the serious argument, but that's not effective against this. And then the other option is basically to be a tanky. Like the people who are, quote unquote, down to their level, doing the same thing back of just like, oh, it's all about feelings and endless barrage of propaganda statements. Those are just tankies, right? Dumbass fascist, get out of the way, fascist. You're a pig. You're you're an imperialist. You're a global scum. You know, what, whatever you want to eat. That's doing the same thing back. You're just doing these simple, blunt, exhaustive arguments of bad because bad ideology. The rest of the left, that's demonized too. So there's the tanky approach of calling everyone who's wrong right of freaking fascist but, and constantly barraging them but that's hatred. the only counter argument that goes oh, at their level though there there is something though triumphalism of the left think about how often in the history profession we talk about resistance and resilience the class i taught 
today, I was giving a lecture on Indian removal. Not a nice subject, right? But I end it with the Florida War. And I do this purposefully. The Second Seminole War, or the Florida War, however you want to phrase it, the majority of the tribe managed to stay in Florida despite the U.S. Army and Navy attempting to push them out. So I end the lecture on an American Indian triumph. The whole point is that while while American Indian removal was a terrible policy that resulted in thousands upon thousands of deaths, there is this one speck of triumph. The day-to-day person hears the triumphalism but cynically dismisses it because they're not seeing day-to-day results compared to the 60s through the 90s, 2000s, I suppose, with like gay marriage and stuff. The last 10 years have been backsliding in almost every category. Not everything. You can talk about like the triumphant labor rights, but when was that peak? That peak of top labor power was 50 years ago, and it's been backsliding ever since. Now that there's a backlash against woke stuff, like removal of Martin Luther King books from school libraries, something that even in previous culture wars was not something that was on the table. It was like a third rail, like, oh no, that's too dangerous. Don't go that far. So we're seeing backsliding on racial issues. Yes, we got gay marriage, but we are seeing heavy... Possibility of removal of gay marriage, too. Yes, we've seen the reversal on abortion. When you see these things over and over and over again, every avenue, you just look at triumphalism and go, well, fuck that. That's I'm not seeing that happening. We're going backwards. And it's easy for us as historians to say, oh, well, you know, these things go in cycle every few decades. Well, they're eventually like two decades from now, we'll go back the other direction. Well, most people are like, oh, great. So I'll be old by the time. Where we started, we were ahead of our ancestors, but we will only be slightly ahead of them when we die. It's a constant fight. And to get that intergenerational view is only really for us historians. I think we all still believe fundamentally in the idea that the arc of history bends towards progress. And yet the art history of propaganda clearly shows the opposite. Considering propaganda is the way that we propagate ideology, that doesn't bode well for where we're going. Somehow, propaganda becoming less artistically viable has shown that we as a society have become less meaningful. How have we gone from fledgling attempts at propaganda all the way to the medium swaying all Americans and defining the way that we make media in general, and then declining to just something that you throw scattershot at your enemies. How has propaganda as an art form defined its own arc? Over a long hundred year process? Mm -hmm. No, that's just my answer. (laughs) We don't really have an answer for why this arc happened, but there is a clear arc. It began with this like fledgling steps and then as like foreign influence changed cinematography, we kind of perfected it. We took what Nazis and communists were doing and combined it into capitalist propaganda and it was effective. And we domesticated it, which it worked all the way through Reagan. The Reagan ruined everything. I I was actually saying he didn't. I know, but I can't help myself. The cartoon all stars one it still worked it made the argument that it needed to make but since then we haven't seen anything worthwhile it's been literally downhill since michael moore started making propaganda and everybody started copying him you know cinema peaked in the 90s but then they got complacent and it was all about just getting the money and turning out the product there was no quality that went into it and now it's just endless rehashes over and over again question for this larger series for the entire series, is propaganda driven by popular sentiment or does it drive popular sentiment? Feeds upon itself. 
obviously. But which one is more important? I still think that a lot of it originally starts from top down, and then it gets to a point where after feeding upon itself, it opens Pandora's box, and you just can't stop the boulder going down the hill anymore. I think that propaganda tends to be at its most successful if it's already playing into public sentiment. Basically, anything we've watched with the 21st century, it's playing against popular sentiment. Be it Bowling for Columbine and An Inconvenient Truth, or the Intelligent Design one, or PragerU. Like, these are all set up specifically to play to their base. It's preaching to the choir. It's just something to bombard their opposition with nonsense. Whereas everything prior to Michael Moore was about convincing people. It was about changing their minds. And we know through a lot of psychological studies that changing people's minds is actually a lot more difficult than just some very effective propaganda. But that doesn't mean you have to relinquish the quality of your propaganda, you know? But nevertheless, it's happened. There's yeah, no turning right. back. They told the world how they felt with the sound of the propaganda at. Uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> we are, we it's... are. Parker University, we are, we <laughs> oh, are. God. <laughs> Parker University. I would not be surprised if POD freaking actually was like. Little Susie, she was only 12 and she had every chance to excel. But then things grew bad ever since her daddy left her. But then she chose <laughs> to become a he and it made me go. <laughs> <laughs> so we've seen a rise in effectiveness when we've seen a loss in quality will it continue that way well or I, will it change i don't think it's going to change unless it has to the difference is that we've gone from what's like convincing people over to exhausting the opposition those are two fundamentally different things. So you could argue like, wow, we've learned that it's actually hard to change people's mind. So we decided we're not going to change their mind. We're just going to make them not do anything to stop us. And mm -hmm. so the only way we would switch away from that method is if somehow that ends up becoming ineffective, which I don't know. Part of about art forms and sciences are that regardless of how subjective some things may be, ultimately there are core things about about it that you discover and once you discover them that's just how it works so what if we've taken the art the science of propaganda and we've gotten to the point where we've developed the most effective kind that we can possibly get and that there is never going to be a more effective what if that's just the limit artificial intelligence that's not changing the game that's just making the exhaustion even bigger it's accelerating quantity over quality. Yes, but I'm saying because we've been talking about same. when we've been talking about quantity over quality, we've been talking about individual people resorting to really bad arguments. I mean, it's been bad arguments all along. Reefer Madness, we were laughing our asses off. All the way to Cartoon All Stars, we were laughing our asses off. The difference, like with. Prager you, for instance, you can just bombard people with arguments so quickly that you just can't counteract it. It takes 50 minutes in order to counteract five minutes of disinformation. So you've got a tenfold amount of work in order to dispel quantitative disinformation. So if you sick an AI on that and make the barrier to, uh, to creating that footage even lower... Pandora's box has already been opened. It's just getting worse from here. This is one of the most cynical statements you can possibly well, for make. The best, and it, for the worst, yep. Exactly. My way of phrasing that is I'm a short-term pessimist, but a long-term optimist. What does that mean for propaganda? I don't even want to know at this point. There are so the many only, different directions that propaganda can, the can only, go. The only positive way out of this I can see is that the bombardment is so massive. There will be some generation where the average person adopts that old adage of don't believe everything you read, and they're skeptical about everything, which in turn forces them to go the extra mile to learn what the truth is, which means you get back into the culture of doing proper research. There's one final question that we have to answer. What is propaganda? 
Well, that was our stream, everyone. <laughs> We've talked about where it's been, where it's going, where it is as an art form. But what is it? Merriam-Webster's Dictionary has three senses. I'm guessing it's not going to be the first one because uh, it says a congregation of Roman curia having jurisdiction over missionary territories and related institutions. To propagate, yeah. Uh, that's not what we're talking about when we say propaganda. <laughs> but the second sense seems useful. The spreading of ideas information or rumor for the purpose of helping or injuring an institution a cause or a person i don't really agree with the last part of that the of a person because the whole idea of propaganda is all about institutions you can have propaganda against people it has to be public figures i mean i don't know i mean you could demonize an individual person with gossip propaganda rumor right all you have to do is talk to the old ladies yeah, at the but, retirement uh, rumor home. in and of itself is not propaganda it's it has to be in service of an institution an institution can support a cause the whole point of propaganda is that it should be in service of an institution and finally, the third sense says ideas, facts, or allegations spread deliberately to further one's cause or to damage an opposing cause. So this is that information I dislike. In the definition says facts. So if facts are propaganda, I, I don't know. You could like cherry pick facts to tilt someone, yes. right? So, I, so I would say that's what they're referring to. This part right here. Which says, uh, propaganda isn't just disinformation or some ideas you dislike. It is media dedicated to propagating a message that benefits its institution's cause. It requires institutional backing, and that institution must be devoted to the same purpose of the media labeled as propaganda. One key thing we discovered along the way is that propaganda must also make an argument specifically oriented around benefiting an institution. So a recruiting advertisement isn't propaganda unless it is unless it is dedicated to arguing why joining something is good for the institution. A historical documentary isn't necessarily propaganda unless the history it publishes is dedicated to an institution's benefit, which requires dishonesty through triumphalism or denigration. It's complicated, but it's oriented somewhat around this dictionary definition, but a little bit more nuanced. No, nothing, nothing, nothing stood out about that that I disagree with. It's advancing your cause. Like at the end of the day, whether it's through winning people over, getting people to buy the thing, to prevent others from bothering to try and stop you, whatever it is, it's about advancing your cause. Bolshevism on trial in 1919 to reefer madness in uh, the 1930s, the World War II propaganda that was about why we fight, to just after the post-war trying to prevent fascism with don't be a sucker, going all the way to Anarchy USA with Bircher's domesticating propaganda to their own advantage and the various Reaganite and 21st century forms of propaganda, we've seen massive changes in the medium all the way across this time frame. I hope everyone watching has gained a greater understanding of what propaganda is, as I have, and I hope Emperor Tiger Star has. In this course, we've seen its rise, fall, and dare I say, propagation. I definitely promise I have. My brain is just too low battery to be able to express it properly. We've seen from its fledgling beginnings, trying its best to do something, to the height of its artistic prowess, to a domestication of that art form for use against political enemies, to something that you could use literally against children in order to propagate your message, all the way to the democratization of media and the profligate version of propaganda that resulted from that with all the 21st century versions that we've seen. Ultimately, to a more quantity over quality expression of that art form.
it's been a wild ride. I hope everybody has uh, gained something from the experience. Remember, no matter what you may hear, no matter what people tell you, the truth is propaganda is a noun and there's nothing you can do to change that. That will always be true as long as English is spoken. While it's been a heck of a ride, a whole half a year, and trust me, I've got a lot of work ahead of me in terms of editing this stuff. It requires understanding in order to criticize something. If you want to say something is propaganda and criticize it as thus, you need to understand the art form in order to do so. And that is the ultimate goal of what we're doing here. So cheers, and I hope you all have a good night. Don't hang on. Nothing lasts forever but the earth and sky. It slips away. And all your money won't another minute buy. <laughs> dust in the wind. All we are dust is dust in the, in the wind. wind.